Hi everyone and thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to do a review on uh, some various pendant uh, options that um, I've been trying out uh, for Mac 3 and basically it's just going to let you know what I've found on them and um, which one I think is the best, uh, certainly the best for me anyway. Um, by no means have I tested all the options uh, but I've tested um, three different types and um, hopefully it'll give you guys uh, some ideas anyway and uh, allow you to decide or make it easier for you to decide which you think is best for your machine. The three options that I've tried are a number keypad, I've got two here, a games console um, joystick controller and an actual uh, purpose-made pendant for uh, Mac 3. I'm going to start with the um, game console controller. Now this I found to be quite good. It uh, You can use the joystick controls. Now those I didn't like. Uh, the reason I didn't like the joystick controls here is because if you push it diagonally the machine moves diagonally. Uh, that's great if you happen to want it to do that, but if you're trying to delicately uh, nudge it uh, into a small spot and you accidentally do it on an angle, the thing takes off uh, to the wrong place and uh, now you've got two axes you've got to set up, so I found that a bit of a pain. This is actually a PlayStation 2 um, uh, controller. It has an oddball plug on the end of it here, but you can get an adapter that goes from this to USB. Unfortunately I don't have it at the moment. Uh, uh, this actually belongs to my brother and I'm, I'm not sure where he's uh, hidden the, uh, the USB adapter. Uh, what I did also find is on this particular unit the joysticks also have a corresponding um, keypad. So up, down, uh, left and right uh, are exactly the same as these ones here. Likewise, these four here match those four movements there. You've got a few extra keys here, and on the back here you've also got another four buttons. Now these can all be programmed up for whatever function you want, so you can configure them um, various functions. Like uh, when I was testing this here, I used these here for X and Y. Uh, these here were Z, up and down. Uh, I had a stop button a start button. Uh, down here this was my shift button so I could uh, do rapid jogging and various other functions I thought were useful as I was playing around with it. Um, like I said, on the whole it wasn't too bad. Uh, I suppose if you're used to playing arcade games it would probably be great. Uh, but I did not like these here one little bit. Uh, now I have actually ordered off eBay for about three or four dollars a um, a joystick just like this but without, uh, the, uh, or a controller just like this but without the joystick. So all it's got is eight buttons here and a couple of extra buttons there. I think it had some buttons on the back. Uh, it hasn't arrived yet so I don't really know. But um, uh, And it had a USB plug on the end of it. So I think that would be a better option than this one here. Now like I said this is the PlayStation. I couldn't get my hands on an Xbox uh, joystick. Uh, the uh, the buttons layout seem to be the same, but I, I can't really comment on it. I, I haven't tried it, but I do know that for the Xbox, uh, there's a plug-in you use with it, and it um, allow it stops it going diagonally. So that's probably a big help uh, if you're using the Xbox. Uh, you can also get these PlayStations ones in a wireless format as you can for the Xbox. Now the one last thing uh, with the Xbox controller is there's no plug-in for it in Mac 3. So what you do is you download a program called Joy2Key it's spelled G-O-Y number 2 uh, K-E-Y and then you can actually use that you, you run that program and then you configure the, the uh, the buttons here as you want uh, for the key shortcuts you do use on your um, on your keyboard so 
that's, uh, that's the first option. The second option I tried is the standard numeric keyboard. Now this is quite good. This is, this is nice and cheap. Uh, these are about four US dollars. And um, you can see it's got the left, right, up and down arrows. It's USB compliant. Just plug straight in and away it goes. Um, and you can again configure the keys for basically anything you want. Um, I found this quite nice. It was a bit bulky. I like to use the pendant with one hand and uh, I, I uh, found that a bit of a nuisance. But if you actually put it down on the, on the deck there, then you can use the keys as you need. I found it jogged uh, nicely. You can uh, there's a there's a program as part of Mac 3, uh, which allows you to um, reconfigure keys on um, on Mac 3, and that's called Key Grabber. Now I wasn't very impressed with Key Grabber. Uh, it, it's a free part of uh, Mac 3, but I found that. Once it was running, you got no way of shutting the thing down. Uh, now that's not really a major problem. Uh, you, you just couldn't stop key grabber. Well, you could, there's a stop key in key grabber to stop it running, but you can't close the program. I also found that when it came to shutting down the PC, you couldn't close the program, and therefore uh, Windows uh, XP anyway that I'm running uh, would not shut down. Uh, the only way I could actually shut the PC down was either to turn the uh, turn the power off. Uh, mine's a laptop, so it'd eventually uh, run. The battery would run flat and turn off. Or I could, um, uh, I'd have to go Control Alt Delete, get into the Task Manager, and actually close that program right down. So that's just basically a uh, a numeric keyboard. I got that off eBay again for about uh, three to four dollars. Uh, not very expensive. Um, it doesn't matter if it gets damaged out in the workshop either, they're cheapest chips, so um, that's a good option. Having tried the plug-in version, I thought what would be really great is a wireless version of a keypad, and I brought a, uh, a Targus uh, wireless keypad. Again, you can reconfigure all the numbers uh, as you do with the uh, plug-in job, but here's where things fell down. The range on this is pathetic. Uh, you can't use it if you've. To use it, I had to have the the um, dongle here, the re the receiver. Uh, I I put it just down on the table here. Uh, there's a cord comes with it to plug into my hub. It would work if I put the keypad over here. But if I put the keypad up here, it wouldn't work. I also found that the keys were slow in responding sometimes. That I don't mind. If you, if you push it, it doesn't quite start moving immediately. I can, I can live with that. But what I couldn't live with is um, sometimes you'd only give it a small push and it would give you uh, quite a long um, movement of an axis. It, it didn't seem to detect that you'd stop pushing it. And uh, that's absolutely no good, especially if you're trying to, to uh, bring your cutter down uh, and not crash it into your, into your work. So um, this particular unit is useless. It might be okay for um, use um, as it was designed on your laptop or PC uh, in a desk or office environment, but it is of absolutely no use whatsoever uh, out in the workshop. So do yourself a favor, don't buy yourself one of these. Uh, one of the other brands might be quite fine, but don't get this one. Uh, I thought originally maybe I had a dodgy one, but a bit of searching on the uh, internet uh, showed people complaining about the, the um, distance that these things actually work over. And uh, yep, so don't, uh, don't get one of these. These were about um, 14 or 15 US dollars uh, it cost me to, to get this here. Last but not least is this. Now this is a uh, it's called a Max, Mac 3 CNC manual remote controller and this is my favorite. I, I make no bones about that. 
It, uh, it has all the keys you would want. It's got an emergency stop button. It has um, X and Y, Z if you're up and down. Um, spindle speed, you can change your spindle speed up and down. Uh, return to origin point. Uh, single step puts it into single step mode. Uh, redo, that I, I couldn't figure out what the redo button was because I searched through the Mac 3 manual and I could not find any reference to it whatsoever. And what that is, is actually the rewind button. I eventually found out. Uh, spindle on and off and cycle start, so that's your the start your program run. Um, and then we've also got jog keys as well. Now, like I said, I really like this. This is... I'm left-handed, but um, well, I suppose it's not too bad to use the left hand, but it's obviously designed to use with the right. And I, I actually prefer to use my right for this type of work. And it's just ideal. I can basically get to any key I want on here uh, without having to use the other hand at all. <coughs> I'll just uh, quickly show you it working. So to push emergency stop the machine will come out of emergency stop and now I can move backwards and forwards. Now that's on slow jog. What I've done is I've uh, managed to make a, uh, a key um, reconfigure these two keys here. These are your jog increments uh, basically out of the box and um, they uh, allow you to increase or decrease your um, jog rate by 5% each time. But what I've done is I've reconfigured it so it actually adjusts pushing the up one changes my jog rate to 100% and pushing the jog minus uh, changes it to 3%. So if I push jog plus and now as you can uh, see there in the background, it's, it's now moving fast. If I push the jog minus, it's now moving slowly. Which is just exactly what I want. I also reconfigured the single step button here. If I push that, it now puts the um, router into single step, mo uh, into, uh, single step increments when it's jogged. Uh, so I don't know if you can hear that, but every time I push it, there's a click coming from the machine as it just moves one single step. Uh, I've got mine configured to one one hundredth of a millimeter, and um, basically I want that for very very fine tuning of positioning of a cutter, uh, usually for the Z, but could be the X and Y if I'm trying to uh, pinpoint exactly where a um, uh, where a uh, a V cutter might might actually go. Now, um, normally the single step button is not for that. It puts the machine into single step. Uh, so when you push it, it carries out one single step of G code uh, when you're running a program. I could see that perhaps being useful, but uh, for me, putting it into a single step jog mode is more useful to me. And the good thing is the the labeling on it still makes sense. So. Yeah, I'm I'm really pleased with this particular uh, pendant. It's it's going to make my life so much easier uh, in the future. It is a, it's a USB device. It comes with a uh, curly cord on it. Uh, apparently, it's meant to stretch three meters, and it's got a USB plug here and a little joiner in between. So it actually has a a plug-in cord here which plugs into this end here. So you could actually just replace the curly cord. And this curly cord here is basically like a handset cord from a phone. So if this one here craps out, or you want a longer one, because you can get the long um, phone cords, handset cords, you can get, uh, well I know I can get five meter ones here in New Zealand, so I could get a really long uh, cord on this pendant, but I don't really see it being necessary. It also has a wee loop here so you can hang it up. And for my money, this is the best uh, one to go for. Again, uh, purchased on eBay. And uh, no, I think it's a, it's a wee cracker. Now, there is only one thing that I've noticed about this particular pendant. 
and that is, if you can see it there, the two X keys are round the wrong way. This should be X minus, and this should be X plus, uh, because X plus traditionally is on the left hand side, well certainly is on my machine and all the others I've seen so far, but I, I dare say there are others that aren't, uh, and X plus should be on, on the uh, right hand side of the machine. But to be honest, I'm not actually even reading them. Uh, so long as I see X, two X's there, um, I'll assume if I push this one it will, it will go to the left, and if I push this one it will go to the right. And that's good enough for me, I, I don't care that that, that uh, is like that. Now the other thing about this pendant is it's designed to work with the 1024 set screen, which is the default one that comes with, um, it's the one that comes with Mac 3, so you just plug it in and you go. The only thing you do have to do is you have to set up the hotkeys for X, Y and Z, which only takes a couple of minutes and you're up and working out of the box. Uh, I received this and within about 10 minutes I had it working. Um, it took me about another few hours to actually work out how I wanted to use all these keys and everything, but straight out of the box, in a few minutes you can have this up and working and have it, if, if, especially if you're using the standard Mac 3 screen. Okay, well this is my choice anyway, but it gives you some options there. If you're looking for a cheap one that you can set up, you know, if you, have, if you don't want to go and buy uh, something like this here, I would recommend this here. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, because on here you can then just put new labels on here. Uh, plus X, minus X, plus, uh, plus Y, minus Y. You've got your page up and page down. Uh, that would be... Uh, uh, plus Z, minus Z, and these will work straight from the box uh, in uh, Mac 3 um, without any hassle. Then uh, you can either set up a jog key like I have on, uh, on this one here and just assign two keys so you can change the jog rate like I did and uh, maybe reconfigure one of the other keys for uh, single step mode, that, which is what I'd do anyway, or you can um, if you want, you can use uh, key grabber, um, and you can just reassign, say, the zero key as a shift key. And the good thing about this, though, is it doesn't affect the zero key here. Doesn't affect the zero key on the keypad of your uh, keyboard either, uh, which is quite interesting. It's obviously seen as a completely distinct key, uh, so you can still input numbers using the numbers just above the F keys on your keypad. But uh, and, and still use this one here, say, as a shift key. So um, that was uh, that's definitely one of the choices I would probably go for second. And my third choice, which is uh, um, would would be a probably probably not this one, probably the Xbox uh, controller, either wireless or um, corded, whichever whichever you wanted. Uh, people have given. Have, have said that the uh, Xbox um, controller works really well and I didn't really have any problem with that, I, I found it did work well but uh, there is the plug-in for the Xbox Plus, it has the ability to to not um, uh, to, to stop it moving diagonally which I think is a, is a major bonus um, yep, so I haven't got the other uh, one I ordered, it, it just hasn't turned up uh, it probably will tomorrow, uh, Murphy's Law. But uh, that should give you a rough idea of, of some of the options for Mac 3, uh, what you can use. And uh, yeah, the only thing again, as I said before, uh, certainly don't get one of these. Uh, this is a Targus brand one. Don't get that particular model anyway if you want looking for a wireless uh, keypad. It just, it's just range is pathetic. Uh, just no good out in the workshop. So. Okay guys, well I hope this has been helpful and um, hopefully you'll be able to find the uh, pendant that will, that will suit your needs. Cheers.